Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Frequency Bone Summer Music Connection 12, the 12th year of these videos, which there's over 100 of them now on YouTube. My name is Norman Bolter, and I'm pleased to be with you for this whole new season of videos, and not only that, but we're also going to be having Zoom meetings as well, so we can actually get together and speak and go through and engage in a process um, with what the videos are talking about. So there'll be a video first, and then we'll have a Zoom call, and we'll be in touch about that. I think people know how to get in touch with me if anything's unclear about how to do that, but you can. Um, this year, the title is Music and the Natural Worlds, which I think is very fitting, considering we've had so much online time during this coronavirus situation we're in, quarantine and, and all of our education, whether you're a student or teaching, it's been online. And so I thought, well, you know what? It's going to be great to think what it's like not to look at everyone in a little box <laughs> and looking at a kind of a box in your computer and being in a box like your room <laughs> and be in nature which is not a box. And that's really what this video one is. It's talking about getting out of the box of your house. Okay. And going outside and to be aware of that difference in feeling. Now, many times we are. We're in our house and and we walk outside, we go, ah, oh, I can smell some, you know, hopefully, <laughs> unless you're right in the middle of a heavy city and there's a lot of traffic going on, you know, the air can, can be, you know, nice to feel on one of those lovely 75 degree days where there's sun and a lovely blue sky with some nice white, lovely clouds going by and all sorts of things like that. Um, so we realize that the outside environment is different. And it's amazing how conditioned we can get being inside of our house. Really, really different. And we go from one square to another square and you go to another building and it's a square or maybe bigger squares and bigger rectangles. And sometimes, yes, in places of worship, or sports events, or even concerts events, we're in rooms that are a different shape, and they give space. And that's also one of the things maybe we can feel in a forest. We get inside of a different environment with a different set of, the different feeling of space, which is important to feel to feel that space. So the whole of ourselves, it's not our physical body, but our electromagnetic body that does exude from us can actually have some breathing room as well. And that's a great first step into this territory about music and the natural worlds is to feel a lot of times we're not in the natural worlds. We're in a human-made world, and some um, might feel a little bit more natural to what we want in this particular type of enclosed environment, but it's certainly very, very different than being in the middle of a forest. And you know what the big difference is? Everything is alive there. Everything is alive. And this is one of the first steps 
or limbs of progression and building up this deeper appreciation of the natural world as a different space. Everything is alive. And because of that, everything has a purpose. And this is the marvelous thing about really building a relationship with the natural worlds. Whether you're an atheist, an agnostic, or you're a deeply spiritual person or a religious person, or deeply philosophical, no matter what your race, creed, ethnicity, belief system, sexual orientation, political party association, guess what? It makes no difference. And I think everyone could agree with that the natural worlds are not human made. Our own bodies are not human made. Okay? No way. <laughs> I know it might, you're looking at me like, what do you mean? Um, my mom and dad, I understand that. Those are mechanics. Those are mechanics. But all life, okay, there's a reason for insects, as we're finding out. Now, we always knew this, but now when lots are disappearing, we could be in danger. That's a fact. All right? And so they're important, whether we don't like them or not. They're important. And trees are important. And they're alive. They're alive. And so when we go into these spaces, there's another thing to really keep in mind. Everything is alive. Everything has a purpose. That's not random. All right? Might make an, there might be certain rocks that were dropped by glaciers, you know, that look like they were tossed out randomly and they probably fell out, but that's part of the natural movement of land and the earth and its evolution, its development. And so when we're outside, there's weather, all different kinds of weather. There's seasons. And each one has its own life, doesn't it? Each one has its own life. And all of them, all of nature, has rhythm, pitch, and timbre. And so we are going to take all what we our experiences that we're finding in nature, and we're going to tie it into our instruments. And we're going to build these relationships and have better access to the ones we've already had, which are thousands, okay, from being alive, no matter how old you are. And tune to the A of awe and build an appreciation for these lives and see how our music making can express the wonder of nature life. Think of all the composers. Think of all the composers that were inspired by nature. We'd make a giant list because I'll bet all of them at one time were in a certain way. They all use rhythm, pitch, and timbre. Timbre. Well, for example, in nature, when you walk, you walk going for your walk, you'll see a lot of green. But it's not all the same green with everything, is it? Notice the different barks on the trees. 
Notice the different bird songs and the different types of birds and their sizes and their shapes and their color. The different kinds of leaves on plants and on trees. Their identifying features. And water. Notice the different textures and densities of everything, but take it a bit at a time. So first, we start to build an appreciation of what it feels like to be outside as opposed to inside. Just that consciousness and the awareness when you're moving into the woods, valley, you're doing some hiking. In these situations, there are other lives. And when you're entering their home, you know, what kind of respect and gratitude do you want to have for them? So it's a big subject, but what it'll do to feed deeper parts of your person and there have an influence on your art will be giant. Beethoven, when he was writing the Pasquale Symphony, was what nature meant to him. All oh, different birds and animals, the call and response back and forth. In fact, that's another that's a great thing to listen for. The call and response. In nature, the different timings, and so then there was a storm, right in Beethoven six. Then there was the beauty after the storm and the, the thankfulness, the gratitude. I loved William Tell Overtures, the first piece I got into. The, not want to be a classical trombonist. I heard that storm scene. I could like feel the wind and the trombone. I thought, oh, that's hail. And when you start thinking like that, what is the nature of hail? What is the nature of being outside? And what are these lives? One of the great values is it'll move you beyond your school of trombone playing, or trumpet playing, or horn playing, or violin playing, or cello playing, or piano playing, or percussion playing, whatever instrument you play. My hope is that it deepens that school of playing to see, wait a minute, what does hail really feel like if we're going to hit you? And it's crashing down on everything. Or if it's, you know, water coming in and wind going like that. Would we try to get a beautiful, even sound? <laughs> Something to think about. I'm not saying to change your ideas about an auditions, okay? I know there's certain things you have to do to please the committee. But you might want to take an element of that in so they can feel that storm and not just think what a lovely Arban's etude. You can have both. Some are more some people are more prone one way or the other, but I'm hoping to kind of get a little maybe a little bit of the Reese's of the fact where the chocolate hits the peanut butter and becomes one thing. So a little bit of technical, you know, exactness with the meaning. And so I think there's a great territory. Because don't we want our music to be alive? And if a composer is writing about a storm in natural worlds, that's the most important thing.
Are you capturing that spirit and that essence? But it also, even if the music isn't it's just about the natural worlds, having a relationship with the natural worlds will make you open, I think, easier to find the spirit of the music you're actually playing. Because you'll have opened yourself up to a different kinds of life that just aren't based in intellectual or academic understanding of harmony, of the way your instrument should be played, all of that. I think it'll help it. And for those of you enough to join this and be brave to be, I think you'll find it too, and refreshing. Because music isn't, because the nature isn't stagnant. Nothing goes to waste. The human being, um, because we're not, don't have the reverence as a whole species like m much of our native peoples have, with respect and gratitude to the planet we actually live on and all of the lives that are there and the abundance that is there, that they realize nothing is wasted. Well, they didn't waste anything. Now we see a lot of waste. It's, if there's a, about as much plastic as there are fish in the ocean, this is a problem. Really? Because the great composer of life would have said, yes, I'll, I'll make it so plastic is a natural phenomenon. <laughs> So, everything in nature is biodegradable. And each one of them has different timings. So maybe this in tuning with nature will help us to have more of a process in ourselves where we take in, we process, we let out, and we don't put so much to waste, either in our practice time or in other parts of our life. Because you ever think of your practicing as different seasons? I remember I took the four Mozart horn concertos, and and at one point, oh, well, twenty some years ago, I was really into them again. Different times I am, and I had a season for each one. And when I found what worked for me, what the seasons were in each one of the concertos, it totally changed it. It totally changed it. Totally changed it. That's what I'm hoping will happen for you. In your own way. Not my way, your own way. And this will prevent you from falling into a rut. Because you'll keep moving and moving and moving. And tune yourselves maybe more to the cycles of the planet. And when you're in a certain season... Look at Leo wrote something for the trombone, Concertino de Hiva. Winter. Favaldi. Four seasons. <laughs> and so it's a giant subject that we're going to tiptoe through and accumulate to ourselves. So for this, before our Zoom meeting on this, Let's say people are going to start with when each day they go outside, they're going to make a conscious, real conscious activation of their senses. Smell, take a look around, feel the temperature, how they react to it. Listen to the different sounds. And you can eventually, you can take one day, say, I'm just going to really be listening today to sounds out where I am and in nature, and just in human-made environments. Feel the difference in acoustics and sounds. I'm going to listen for different pitches one day. I'm going to, I'm going to see, I'm going to pay attention to color. And we all know 
but the musical term for that is timbre. And to realize when we're outside, especially in not so much the neighborhood, even though there's some living things every now and then in the midst of the sidewalk, and you see a blade of grass shooting through the sidewalk, you go, wow, that's persistence. Your great mentor of mine said, persistence is the law closest to the heart of Mother Nature. Ain't that the truth? So I'm looking forward to hearing what you make, not just make out of this video, but what you're going to start to experience by being more conscious of your surroundings, turning on your senses, take in some air, feel the temperature. And if you take a little notebook with you and you want to write down your stuff or after you come inside of the house from walking around, what were the different rhythms? Maybe you're going to listen for rhythms. Maybe you're going to listen for pitch. Maybe you're just going to listen for timbres, combination of all of it. And then one time you're just going to use your eyes and look around. So that's the start, okay? And I look forward to Zooming with you soon. Music can be and is certainly part of the natural world.